every shipwreck researcher or lake boat buff has had the dream of snooping along the backwaters and stumbling upon the long-forgotten remains of an old shipwreck. Well, here's how it actually happened to me and my boat buddy DJ story. The exact location of the backwater in this story is in Michigan's Lower Peninsula, south of Bay City, in a now unused channel of water on the west side of an island known as the Middle Grounds. Prior to the 1900s, the Middle Grounds were surrounded with the industry of lumber. This forgotten backwater was once a busy waterway with a swing bridge across its entrance. In an area known as the West Channel, the backwater supported two sawmills, at least four salt works, and a barrel factory known as the Standard Hoop Company. Today, no one uses this area. For decades, there have been rumors that circulated locally of old shipwrecks in the West Channel. On the advice of a local historian, we calculated the general area where the wreck may be sighted. Finally, on November 8, 2000, the water in the Saginaw River was a remarkable 26 inches lower than normal. That would allow us to go down onto the mud flat of the West Channel and look for the rumored wreck. As DJ and I stood there on the mud flat, we looked out across the water, and in the distance we saw some old piles sticking up. We also saw some wood sticking up out of the murky water on the far shore. That may be something. We saw some other piles toward the bridge. That was nothing. Then as I casually looked down, I saw a hunk of wood sticking out of the mud right between my feet. And there was another. And another. And another. And another. And another. And another. They led away and curved toward the water in the exact shape of a boat's hull. As DJ looked across the channel toward the opposite shore, he quipped that he couldn't see anything. I replied, Dude, look at your feet. Looking down, his eyes traced the exact lines that I had seen. He leaped straight up, as if he just stepped on a rattlesnake. We're standing on it, he shouted. The wreck that rests in the West Channel is difficult to recognize at first glance, because the remains are mostly buried in the mud. Parts of the wreck are, in some areas, badly scattered. This site map shows the location of the documented components of the shipwreck as we first found it. We took some measurements and a few photos. Then it was time to research and see if we could find out who this wreck was. Meanwhile, in March of 2001, an extreme south-southwest wind revealed many answers for us. The wind literally blew the water out of the Saginaw River and into Saginaw Bay, and thus lowering the water to a record low that had not been seen for about 30 years. At the wreck site, the vessel was exposed like the bones of a beached whale. Looking north, it was clear that the reason why the planks appear to lay so neatly upon the site is because they are actually hull timbers fastened to the ribs with spikes. From this angle, one of the outer hull timbers can be seen still attached to the ribs. Plus, this new and much lower water level showed us something that we had not seen before. The boat's stern. Clearly, this wreck rests in two pieces. Now we have a good chance to examine the stern. Here we have a detailed study of what appears to be the bed timbers and engine mounting bolts. Notice that. Although the bolts are twisted in assorted directions, each is nearly cut off at exactly the same length. This indicates that the engine was loosened, but then had to be torqued around. Great force was required in order to pull it from the hull. The object seen here appears to be a blowdown pipe or some sort of discharge for the vessel's boiler. The wreck is now telling us that she was indeed a steamer of some sort. One of the biggest puzzles that the wreck offers is this series of iron straps and an odd cylinder that is embedded within them. This could be the flange and case for a rudder. 
but it's tipped up 90 degrees. Also, the fact that the hull timbers appear to have been sliced off almost evenly is a good indication that this vessel burned to the waterline. The big key to identifying what sort of a steamer this was is seen here. Her thick stem timber is fully consistent with that of a wooden tugboat. Yet most telling is this stem iron. A stem iron is an iron strap that is attached to the stem timber of a wooden tug and used to protect the vessel that is often called upon to push things. The stem iron that is attached to our mystery wreck is totally consistent with that type of a vessel. There is no doubt that these are the remains of a steam tug. After a good deal of research, I determined that this wreck was the tug Caddy Reed. We'll find out how I know that and how she got where she was abandoned in part two of this story.